Well, this is a big question because there are many interventions that are being developed. Uh, and I think many of them have potential to uh, improve lifespan uh, slightly. Um, so it's difficult to identify a single one because aging is a complex process. So there may be a complex interventions and each one may extend lifespan by a few percent. Uh, but if thinking about interventions that has potential to significantly expand lifespan, I would focus on interventions that target epigenetic mechanisms of aging because that's, this may be a central underlying mechanism. My, my criteria for the promising anti-aging intervention should have a dose quite, I mean, factor. So safe, of course, effective, easy to implement, and also affordable. So as long as the intervention that fits to the in with these four criteria, I think it will be very promising um, strategy. So I have to say that because I'm working with rapamycin, and I believe that the rapamycin and it's the antinog of uh, uh, mTOR inhibitor is belongs to these categories. Thank you. So thank you, first of all, for having me. What a wonderful conference with so many also international guests, but also so much national guests here from China, really working together and really learning together. You ask me, what is the most promising intervention uh, we will have in the next decade? I would say it's very personalized. It's very precision, healthy, medicine-like. So what does it mean? You have to diagnose yourself to actually know what kind of intervention to give because the pace of aging in our body in a different organ system is quite different. So that's the reason why we really have to personalize all the approaches, and I have many, uh, in the next decade. And that will really achieve optimizing health. Yeah, I think we are living right now in a very exciting time because now we can talk about interventions, how we extend the lifespan, extend the health span, especially. Um, and there is a sp uh, several approaches, you know, including um, reprogramming um, or rejuvenation, um, you know, epigenome. And uh, to my opinion, you know, I think it's one of the probably most uh, promising approaches because. Um, you know, originally I was studying the genome stability and role of DNA repair and longevity, which is quite an important factor to a longer lifespan. But I think what we are missing right now that the genome stability lead to the epigenome stability and itself leads to aging. I think right now we start to realize the importance of the epigenome, not the genome itself. Um, it means this probably when you try to rejuvenate the genome, not to use any Yamanaka factors because, you know, the original approach was uh, to use the transcriptional factors to do the uh, epigenetic reprogramming. But this leads to the um, high risk of cancer. You know, we need to find uh, the treatment which will be uh, very safe. Because if you are talking about the extension of lifespan or health span, um, we don't have much of the room for the side effects because we want to make sure that uh, you know, the, all the treatments will be absolutely safe. And this is probably the, one of the biggest problem. But I think that idea of epigenetic reprogramming is very promising, but it has to be safe. Well, I think there's kind of a difficult way to answer that question. I think some of the interventions we're testing now, like AKG and rapamycin, are likely to have modest effects. But maybe in 10 years, we'll find out that the rejuvenation strategies to reprogram cells uh, to younger state, they may be having the biggest effects. I think it's still early, but uh, there's a lot of excitement about those.